Hey everybody, that is Lauren. My name is Russ. Welcome to our Sunday video for vinyl. Kicking off our week, we always have our vinyl review video on Sunday, the reaction videos at the end of the week on Saturday, and then in the middle is our uh, discussion topics. And we've had more than a few discussion topics we've done on various versions of uh, Bruce Springsteen, the E Street Band, uh, individual members and whatnot. So mm -hmm. today, uh, if you grew up in the 80s, uh, the, the set that we're talking about today was everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Like, uh, we'll get into it in a little bit, but I remember when my dad took me the day it came out, or the week it came out. I don't think it was there the day it came out, but my dad took me to a Meyer Thrifty Acres up in Detroit uh, to buy it. And I mean, it was like half an aisle because they're, uh, the packaging for all of them, whatever format you bought it in, mm -hmm. cassette, CD, or uh, uh, or LP were all the size, the same size awesome as the mm -hmm. uh, LP yeah, set. Yeah. And so it was like half the box set and because of how big Springsteen was. It was like, well, they just, knew they yeah. were going to yeah. yeah, sell a ridiculous amount of them. So uh, Bruce Springsteen live 1975 to 1985, or I should say Bruce Springsteen in the E Street Band because the E Street Band plays heavily yep. uh, in, in how good these performances are. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a five LP set. When I was a kid, it came on three cassettes or three CDs as well. Uh, but what you see used far and away is the uh, LPs. Like I don't ever, I can't remember the last time I came across a, uh, and a uh, fun fact for those wondering the uh, LP set, all the typeface on it is in white, the cassette, all the typefaces in blue and the um, CD. It's all in red. That's how, you know, but like glancing at it, that's how you know which one is which. Uh, and if you look on the spine of it, on the upper corner, it says five LPs. Uh -huh. uh, it would say three cassettes or three CDs. But you can just glance at it and whatever color the typing is, you you can tell which which is inside. That's clever. Yeah. Um, as far as packaging goes, what's interesting about this is box sets. And tell me if I'm wrong on this. Box sets and whatnot really became a big thing in the 90s to me. Like, I don't remember there being box sets and yeah. compilations and stuff in yeah. the 80s and certainly not the 70s, right? No, no, no. Well, I mean, because I, I think by the time you get to the 90s, right, you get a lot of those, um, you know, more established artists from like the 60s and 70s that are kind of doing career I think the big one everyone remembers first is like the the box set was the Led Zeppelin one with the crop circles on the front. Mm -hmm. It was a four CDs. Yeah. And like that. And then you have Clapton did uh, Crossroad, the Crossroads box set after that. And yep. I feel like it's, it's stuff like everyone had a copy of these box sets, right? Right. So... All this is to say when this came out, none of us really knew. Like, I remember hearing about it and being like, well, how's that going to look like? It's, yeah, gonna be, it's just, uh, just going to be five records sitting there on the shelf and you get, you know what I mean? Like, you didn't, you didn't know, yeah. you know? So it's kind of uh, mundane packaging in a way because it's just the size of an LP and inside is four. It's, they, each one doesn't have its own outer sleeve. It's all uh, just the inner sleeves, right? Mm -hmm. And in a fairly decent booklet, it's like the size of uh, the 12-inch the booklet and in great picks and, and lyrics and mm -hmm. road stories. But I feel like this box set kind of set the tone for how the rest of them were going to like Aerosmith Pandora's box. Um, like I did the, the big box sets I can think of all follow this formula. They have that slip case, the discs are yep. arranged inside and then your uh, booklet is on top and they're like, and therefore box set. Yep. Right. Yep. Like, and I'm not mad at it. I just it's I feel like if something if something more special had been done with this, then I feel like maybe box sets in the future in the 90s might have been hmm. because this was a major, major release like that was huge at the time. Like, I don't, I, I don't have the chart information in front of me, but I would be surprised if it didn't chart very high on the box on the uh, billboard charts the week it came out for being a five LP set. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, um, sound is fantastic yeah there there's stuff from so the early you know, 75 76 that sounds like they're and they probably are playing in front of 30 or 40 people and it sounds just as good as the stuff that was recorded on the board in the usa tour yeah uh or the stuff from 82 83 and the stuff that you you your springsteen is a little before mine yeah you, I, I like an early the, springsteen you like the first two or three records yeah i like i mean i'm I like the you know the first three up to like Born to Run you know what I mean that's um, that's kind of my my wheelhouse mm. I I like like messy dirty beach Springsteen 
Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of, of stuff from his first two albums, you know, in this and versions of them that I never heard before. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's uh it's a whole lot of fun. I know it's not in the first three, but like the version of the river that's on here, I always tell people, I'm like, if you haven't heard that version of the river, it's not even the song, it's the story before the song. Like if you haven't heard that version, then you haven't heard the river, in mm-hmm. my opinion, right? Uh we're we're gonna circle back more to the value of the box set. Like we always talk about value last, but we're gonna circle back more to like the contents. Uh, mm-hmm. in it, uh, at the end, um, price, here's the thing. We, I feel like we got a steal on this because, and when I always put pictures of everything up, you're going to see that the outer box of this is beat to hell. Um, what do we always say? You don't play the, cover. you just, you just don't play the, the, the outer cover, the records themselves on the inside, pristine shape. Was this one? I think it had a sticker. Uh, they had, they, the, cause we got this to tiger records in Jacksonville mm-hmm. and they had, they wrote on it. Um, you know, LPs are great. Don't judge this by its cover yeah, or something yeah, along is, those lines. It yep. was like cover beat up records. Yeah. Awesome. This is 20 bucks, which is insane. So, and again, I know there's a billion copies of this out there. So I know there's probably somebody watching this like, yeah, well I see that record for cheap all the time, but you don't see it in this condition. Like mm-hmm. the box was beat up, but the, the cover, the records were absolutely perfect to me. I would be shocked if this wasn't opened once when it was bought. Play maybe one of the records was played, uh, and then they probably just moved around a lot. Is why the box was beat up. Mm-hmm. You know, I would be shocked if this was played more than ten times when yeah. it was uh, owned originally. Okay, so when we get into value, me personally, uh, when 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 we picked it up and we looked at it, just off the top of my head, I was thinking, oh, I bet that's about forty or fifty bucks. I would pay that in a heartbeat mm-hmm. for this. Like we got it for twenty. But I would pay like, would you go up to forty or fifty bucks? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like again, like just You're still paying ten bucks a record, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, absolutely, absolutely. So, and it, the value in this box set to me is more, and this is where we're going to circle back to what's in it. Um, again, like when I was a kid, born in the USA was the first thing that I heard. You know, I was born in seventy five, so uh, the first thing I ever heard was born in the USA, um, like many people, and so for me. This when this came out, the one of the reasons I bought it was because it was a crash course in everything before. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have to like well, the way I got into Pink Floyd was when Del Cat Sound of Thunder came out. Uh, in many ways, the second disc of that two LP set is a greatest hits record, right? And I ended up going back and buying Wish You Were Here and Metal and Dark Side of the Moon because of those songs. Same thing here. Like there's stuff that I didn't even know. Like this is how I learned that Bruce wrote uh, Because of the Night. This is how I learned he wrote Blind by the Light. Um, f- uh, fire, I thought was a pointer sister song when I was a kid. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then for you, you already like that era, but then you're getting to hear songs in a new in a way. New, yep. Yeah. And then the last thing I want to point out, and this doesn't have anything to do with anything other than just a cool story to share is, um, I think it's fun that both you and I have connections to this record with our, with our dads now. Yeah. Uh, one being my dad was the one that took me to, uh, Meyer Thrifty Acres in uh, corner of Pontiac Lake Road and M59. Uh, it's still there. And uh, bought it, the, the, like, either, not the day it came out, but the week it came out. And I remember the third cassette, side A, starts with Born in the USA. And the way Bruce does that uh, ear shattering rasp count off into it, mm-hmm. I remember my dad being like, But why does he have to scream like that? And I was like, Oh, they, you're not going to like anything else that we listen to on this if you don't like that. You know what I mean? Like, this is like the most pop friendly song. On the whole set. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, but then, uh, so your dad happened to be in town when we picked this up, mm-hmm. and it was cool for me, because your dad's cut from the same Springsteen cloth you are, and you two were just sitting there, just, for lack of a better term, geeking out. A little bit, yeah. It was a whole lot of fun. Yeah. So I think it's fun that, like, both of us bought this with our dads at different times. Mm-hmm. Uh, your dad enjoyed it slightly more <laughs> than <laughs> my dad did. My dad was, uh, like Garth Brooks said, my dad lived on the corner of uh, Haggard and Jones, you know, so when... He didn't want anything to do with this long-haired uh, rock and roll business, you know. From so, New Jersey. Yeah, from Jersey of all places, you know. So, uh, but anyways, I thought that was uh, fun to share. So, uh, we do a vinyl video every single Sunday. If this is your first time here and you're only here for the vinyl content, please make sure to hit the notification bell uh, because you'll see our pleasant faces at least two more times every single week. And uh, even if a video comes out on Thursday and you go, well, I don't care about, you know, Jimmy Buffett or uh, Elvis Presley or, or Lady Gaga or Michael Jackson or whatever, um, you know, there's probably something in the discussion that, that you'll be interested in, uh, or at least eventually there's going to be a video on an artist that you love. So if you hit the notification bell, you will see all of that stuff. Uh, at the very least, please drop a like on the video because that does help us out a great deal. And as we always say, thank you so much for watching.